Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life X10 show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find a link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, Deep Longevity has launched a new AI system called Young.AI to track the rate of aging at the molecular, cellular, tissue, organ, system, physiological, and psychological levels. Deep Longevity uses deep aging clocks which integrate many biomarkers to provide a universal multifactorial measure of human biological age. Deep Longevity says that the Young.AI app and web system will enable everyone interested in learning more about their own aging to get access to some of these aging clocks and start tracking their rate of aging. The iOS and Android apps are not yet available, so we will all just have to wait a bit longer until we can learn more. As we previously reported here at Lifespan News, Accurate biological aging clocks are really important to help us understand how and why we age and how to stop it. So be on the lookout for the Young.AI app and make sure you stay subscribed to learn more updates as they come. Moving on, researchers from University of Geneva discovered that a warm environment of 34 degrees Celsius improves bone strength and prevents the age-related bone density loss typically seen in diseases such as osteoporosis. The researchers showed that this is linked to bacteria in the gut microbiome. The researchers were able to improve bone strength and density in mice suffering with osteoporosis by transplanting microbiota from mice that were kept at a warmer environmental temperature. The changes result from bacterial production of the metabolite polamine, which is known to improve bone upkeep. Blocking polamine production prevented the benefit. But what about humans? When the team looked at an epidemiological data relating to the incidence of osteoporosis, they discovered a lower incidence of hip fractures in populations in warmer regions even accounting for calcium consumption and vitamin D levels. This could serve as the basis for new osteoporosis treatments, whether via fecal transplant or through probiotics, if we can identify and culture the relevant bacteria. For our next story, a new study shows that mutations accumulate in the mitochondrial DNA of egg cells. This leads to changes in cellular metabolism, which results in reduced fertility. The study also showed that nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN, treatment can restore the metabolic balance in aging mouse oocytes, rescuing fertility. A team of researchers at Chinese universities looked at oocytes from women undergoing fertility treatments. The researchers found that oocytes from women older than 38 had more mitochondrial DNA mutations than oocytes from women younger than 30, and they were more likely to have rare mitochondrial DNA mutations. The researchers took advantage of a mouse strain with a defective version of an enzyme that synthesizes mitochondrial DNA. By breeding these with wild-type mice, they were able to generate a series of mice with four levels of mitochondrial DNA mutation. Mice with more mitochondrial DNA mutations had lower fertility. They also crossed these mice with normal mice and found that the fertility problem was in the female mice. The researchers showed that the reduced fertility was because the NADH or NAD ratio was lower in mouse oocytes with more mitochondria DNA defects. Even though the mechanism linking between NADH or NAD plus and fertility remains unclear, treatment with NMN, which improves the NAD plus ratio, restored the fertility level of the mice. While it's exciting to see that NMN treatment can reverse this, generalizing the results from mice to humans would be hasty. Nevertheless, by identifying the various components at play, the study offers a path forward for research on the link between fertility and aging. Moving on, a microporous membrane can promote the regeneration of healthy human skin. Skin is hard to regenerate because it's a complicated tissue with many different layers, components, and cell types. One strategy currently used in the clinics is to apply an amniotic membrane to the wound. The amniotic membrane has many of the same extracellular matrix components as skin, as well as growth factors that suppress inflammation and upregulate tissue formation. Researchers in Iran hypothesized that the high density of amniotic membrane hinders the healing process, so they applied a chemical treatment to create a membrane with a more microporous structure. 
Tests in rats showed a slight increase in tissue formation and a large increase in vascularization in their microporous amniotic membrane compared to the membranes typically used in the clinic, along with a considerable decrease in inflammation. This is promising news for people with chronic wounds, though of course, the efficacy in humans remains to be determined. For our final story, a group of researchers have been able to ameliorate Alzheimer's-like pathologies in mice by using a microtubule stabilizing compound. Microtubules are polymers of tubulin that form part of the cytoskeleton and provide structure and shape to the eukaryotic cells. Tau proteins help maintain microtubule stability. When microtubules get too many phosphor attachments, they stop holding microtubule components together. Not only do the microtubules disintegrate, but tau molecules form clumps called neurofibrillary tangles, which are an important symptom of Alzheimer's. Accumulation of amyloid beta peptides is another major hallmark of Alzheimer's. The team treated transgenic mice prone to accelerated accumulation of amyloid beta and neuronal loss in several critically important areas of the brain with epithelion D, a brain-penetrating microtubule stabilizing agent. This led to a decrease in the amount of tau molecules saturated with phosphors, as well as a decrease in amyloid beta accumulation. The researchers confirmed that the mice had more stable microtubules. The mice also underwent a series of cognitive tests. Epithylone D treated mice showed major improvements in most of these tests, sometimes performing similarly to the healthy control group. Finally, the team also showed that epithelone D helped to restore neuronal integrity and, as a result, neuronal function, which probably played a major role in the amelioration of cognitive decline. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, remember, there's a few free, quick, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already yet, make sure that you like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, Make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.